Hey, how's it going? I wanted to go ahead and make a YouTube video on this because I searched YouTube and couldn't find any information on it. Basically, it is uh, searching a SQL Server database within a specified date range. Uh, at work, they wanted to find patients who had been sent to the hospital within a certain date range where they put in a start date and an end date. And uh, this is basically how you do that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume a few things, one of them being that um, you know how to set up your own SQL Server database on your machine. Okay, I created one called Patients with a table patient and as you can see my columns I got the first name, last name, state, admission date, discharge date, or discharge and discharge date. Okay, so that's the uh, database we're going to be connecting to. I'm also going to assume that you know how to get around uh, Visual Studio 2010. So let's go ahead and launch the application. And we're going to create a new project um, using the .NET Framework 4, a Windows Forms application. Let's go ahead and call it uh, Date Range. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and pull this out a little bit. Give us a little more real estate to work with. And from our toolbox, we're going to go ahead and uh, put in two text boxes. Where's one? Text box two. Spread these out a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the properties of these just the default so that's text box one and text box two and that's going to be important later when we write our code um, so just remember text box one and text box two I guess to help you out I could put a couple of labels in here label one label two and again I'm assuming that you know how to get around Visual Studio 2010 so we'll go ahead and change the property of label one to start date. Oops. And label two, we will call end date. Okay. All right, good enough with that. Except that it looks like crap line it up a little bit better. There we go. Alright, we need a button to perform the function. Uh, button. And let's go ahead and change its text to search. And I do want to uh, change its instance name to uh, btn underscore search. Okay. All right. Let me show you that. Oop. btn underscore search. Okay. All right. Now, what we need to do, we want to connect to our data and show the information, connect to our database. So we're going to right click and we're going to choose add. We're going to choose a new item. And we're going to scroll down until we can find data set. We're going to add a new data set. We'll accept the default name, data set one. Check add. And there we go. And over here in your, in your server explorer, uh, there is my patient's database. We'll expand this a little bit. We'll go ahead and just drag patient right onto the data set. Okay? Now we'll save it and close this for now. Now we want to see or put a control in there that's going to see the data. We could do that with data, data grid view, uh, but in this case I was wanting them to be able to export uh, things into Excel. So I chose the um, reporting option, report viewer. We'll go ahead and drag that onto here. Whoa. Okay. 
expand that a little bit so it looks better all right now report viewer is kind of cool it's got its own little wizard that's going to allow you to design the reports from the tables over at your SQL server so what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this little arrow here design new report data set one the data source is going to be data set one that we just created oh and as you can see it goes out there and maps all my column names from patient right here in this wizard it's pretty cool so in this field uh, you've got your available fields column groups row groups we're not going to deal with that today but the values are where you're going to want to drag your column names because those are the columns that are going to show up in your report. Now this charge is not something I need. It's kind of a, a code uh, used by their software program to designate whether somebody's sent to the hospital or not. So I don't really need that, but we do would like to have the discharge date. So click next and click next and oceans fine. And there you go. So we'll go ahead and save that report close it back to our form we'll click on the little arrow again choose a report from the drop down and here's the report we just created and there you go it's going to show up in there now so if we go ahead and hit debug it's going to pull back all the data that's in my sample database okay all the patients but the thing is, is we want to search the date ranges. Say I only want, I don't want 2004, I don't want 2002, I want people 2007 on. Well, this is not functional right now. Let's go ahead and close this. Go back to our project. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Um, Oh, we need to go back to our data set. Sorry. Go back to our data set. Um, open. And this get fill, you're going to right click on it and choose configure. Now this is where you're going to need a little uh, need to know a little SQL server. Uh, we're going to go ahead and write a, put in a where statement. Where. Um, We're in mission date, which is one of our columns. And we're going to choose between. Uh, let me capitalize that so you can see what I'm doing. Between is going to choose our is going to be used for our date range. Uh, between. Now we want to use variables. Now the variables are going to be for what is put into the text box. Text box one and text box two. So we'll go ahead and say at start date and at end date. Oh. And if you'd like, we can, can go ahead and put an order by in here. Oops, that's not part of the code. Okay, there you go. So you click next. We're going to go ahead and uh, keep the method name as fill. That'll be fine. And next, and <clears throat> it looks like I have an error here. So we'll go back and look. I'll order by, it's two words. So next next yeah that takes it cool we'll go ahead and save that all right now we're going to close that and go back to our form so here we are we're going to double click the search button to get into our c sharp code and as you can see uh, here's our code and we have a little red line underneath that and the reason that we have the red line there is just be is because we just put in that where statement so if I were to 
uh, include those variables. We'll say text box one. There it is, text box one dot text. And uh, text box two. Dot text. And there you go, the red line goes away because you just put in your parameters here. Uh, yeah, so that's what's going to happen. Now, this is commented out. We don't need this. Go ahead and delete that. And as you can see, this code to, re to fill, because we called it fill, the method. To fill the report viewer is here under the form load. Okay? We want it to happen when we click the button and put in the information for these text boxes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move this code underneath the button search click event. Okay? So, we'll go ahead and put it here. And you know what? I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and test our application. Let's go ahead and put in the start date as, uh, let's say, March 24th, 2007. Oops. To 12-31-2010. Uh, and now when we click our search, we get our results and they are ordered by admission date. So you're going to have the earliest, which is 2007, 2009, 2010. Let's say we wanted to go through uh, April 24, 2009. Through November 01, 2011. As you can see, it orders by and searches the database and pulls up our results. Very easy. And also, what I, why I wanted to use the report viewer was uh, it would give our end users a very easy capability of exporting to Excel or Word or PDF. So, all right, very cool. I hope that was a good video. Let me know.